Hi, y'all. It's Angela, and I'm back for another episode of Business Unveiled. And you are in for a super, super special treat today. We have an amazing, amazing founder woman. She has helped thousands and thousands of women around the world. And I want to bring her on, Janisha Alora. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Angela. Thanks for having me on your show. Yay. I'm super excited. I know that you founded Soul Rich Women, and then you're also a keynote speaker. And so, but before we jump into that primary business and talking about what you speak about around the world, take us back like way before you were like, the powerhouse woman that you are right now. And tell us about your childhood. Where did you grow up? How did you even get into being an entrepreneur? Welcome to Business Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you thrive in the creative community. Here's your host, events and productivity consultant, Angela Profit. What's up, GSD leaders? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Business Unveiled, where we share expert tips and secrets from top creative industry professionals. You know we're going to take you behind the scenes of our experiences, share with you what we've learned from them, and how it's made us stronger. Because no one said it's easy owning a business, right? But it's a lot more fun when you've got a strong support team around you. And that's exactly what we do at GSD Creative. We're right there by your side. And I'm so excited that you've chosen this podcast to take the first step in growing a productive, profitable, and successful, wildly successful business within the hospitality and creative industry. Today's episode is being brought to you by GSD Academy, where I personally walk you through my four-step process with personalized videos. I give you downloadable templates and so many resources. So if you're serious about changing your life and your business and you're ready to GSD, that is get shit done, go to bit.ly slash GSD Academy. I started working when I was 14 years old, supporting myself through school. So I was never a powerhouse to start with. It was because of my background and I started working as a yoga and aerobics and line dancing, uh, line country line dancing instructor. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. And that, and that showed me the way to put myself through school, paying for my book fees, my tuition fees, and things like that. But often I was being bullied in school because I didn't have really uh, capabilities to keep changing my bags, my pencil cases, and things like that. There was one incident where I remember very clearly that the girls cornered me at the basketball court, and one of them came up and pulled open my PE shirt what? and looked at my bra oh my and gosh. said, Oh, you're wearing the same bra? And I just felt humiliated because so many people were watching and I was being bullied at that time. And consistently it happened again and again and again. And there was another time I remembered in classroom because my bag wasn't new, it was quite old already. It was a hand-me-down. And they just took my bag and threw it across the classroom floor and all my books were strewn across the classroom floor. At that moment, I, I just wanted to die because it was so much bullying to the point where I couldn't take it anymore. I just felt that, what is my purpose of my life? Right. And I went back home. Surprisingly, my mother could sniff that something was wrong. I was already on the ledge of the um, windows, getting ready to jump out of the window committing suicide in fact and you know my mom knew something was wrong and she checked me because I was really quiet I think she checked me out in the kitchen and I live on the 10th floor so she grabbed me and yanked me back onto the floor off the window ledge and she told me turn your mess into your message stop whining in self-pity and things that's happening to you right now. So what if things are bad are happening to you now? Turn this around, turn your mess into a message. And that got stuck in me. 
So moving forward, I continuously remember what my mom told me. Then later on, my friends who believe in me, I had low self-esteem and poor confidence because of the, um, you know, you didn't have a lot of money. I didn't know who my identity, identity was. And my friends believed in me and they enrolled me in Miss Singapore. So that's how I won the Miss Singapore beauty pageant, uh, won Miss Singapore Universe and as a runner-up. And then again, won Miss Singapore International and in 2006. And that was how I represented Singapore twice um, in to really transform my life because I had never had those opportunities. And I really thank God for those of my friends who believed in me and worked really hard to be where I am today. And fast track forward, I became an image consultant, working with CEOs and leaders and politicians to bring their leadership brand online. Uh, I mean, to be on stage, in fact. Yeah. And then later on, I just felt that I, even though I was very well paid, but I was trading time for money. I work, I get paid. I work, I get paid. I don't work, I don't get paid. So that, that would mean to me something really terrible because I wanted to change my life. I didn't want to slave to the hours that I'm working, right? right. So I eventually decided to go online and that was how I moved from image consultancy and you know, quit my life being a 9 to 5 as an occupational therapist and moved into the online space. So I was uh, struggling for a while, but eventually in 30, 2013, 2014, I made $100,000 in three months and then a million dollars in a single year uh, because I found a mentor who can take me from A to B, A to Z, like shortcut my success and really help me to accelerate my growth and my knowledge to bring my brand, my business online. And that really transformed my life. I yeah, made, how did you um, find that mentor? <laughs> oh, I, 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 he was my client. In fact, he was my customer for okay. my image consultancy. And he came for my, one of my image boot camp. So I kind of revamped his entire brand identity and things like that. But it, I mean, later on, and then later on, we became friends. So that was how we developed a friendship. And then mm -hmm. he, I discovered that he had really amazing business experience. He has done $100 million in sales. And, and he's dealt with such a high value um, business, you know. And mm -hmm. that to me, I want somebody who has been there, done that. And that is that, that I would say that role model I'm looking for to, as, at least in a local country, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I later on when we went, we went online, um, he invited me to invest uh, and start a cafe retail chain with three, four other partners. So because my strength was in PR and marketing and, and I could do that for the cafe retail chain and in, we grew from one outlet to 18 outlets and then we went from one country to three countries Singapore, Malaysia and Indonesia and then after four years we exited to a public listed company owner and that was how I learned about business I mean I'm an occupational therapist I, and mm -hmm. an image consultant I know not really about deep business methodologies and how you scale a cafe retail chain and you know and the ins and outs nuts and the bolts of the entire retail chain business. I have no idea how to do that. So yeah. I learned it because we worked as a team. I never gave up. I, I just, you know, even though I didn't have the know-how, I just put my ass into it, you know, like really put myself into it and really want to make it happen. So I think your attitude is very important in business. Entrepreneurship mm -hmm. is never really easy. Like you talk about you know, we start so many different businesses, eight businesses, I've got my beauty business and uh, uh, my merchandise business and that business. But at the end of the day, all these things boils down to one thing. How, how much do you want it? What is the why? And all these are just vehicles. They're like cars, you know, putting them in the yeah. parking lot and then you're know, like collecting them in the collector's um, item and then moving them through different channels and bringing that, Money is just, by the way, I mean, if you could do a business and make money at the same time, why not? Why do you want to think that, oh, you know, I can't have money and do business. I, I can't, can't do that. So that in itself allowed me to eventually invest into Soul Rich Woman. And I brought along uh, my mentor, James, with me. And he 
eventually invested into my business and he's now the man behind Soul Rich Woman. So in, in this journey, it's been very colorful. I learned three things. Three things as an entrepreneur. Really learn um, three things. So A, B, C. So first, you really need to have a business that accelerates. Don't do business mm-hmm. that take five years to succeed. You really have to succeed within like months because online climate is changing so quickly. So how fast are you building up your business? Then you have got to have B. B is it bankable? Is this passion and talent of yours sustainable? Is it going to bring you cha-ching within a period of time? And of course, you say do business and you're not full-time, then don't do a business. Don't call yourself an entrepreneur. Call yourself a hobbypreneur because mm-hmm. only a full, like really focused entrepreneur will have, have impacted life and make money at the same time. So right. that's how bankable it is, right? C is continuity. And this is, I'm talking about business model because I've done cafe retail chain. I've done consultancy work and now I've built up a... Um, network of female entrepreneurs with about 200,000 members and each of them paying about $12 every single month. So that in itself, when you sell a program, when you sell a service, what's next? What, how do you continuously bring yourself continual income and giving, a permission of, giving yourself permission to do that and stop playing small? So that in itself is the ability to receive one Number two, you must have a mentor to guide you in your business model. Number, number two. Number three is to really look at the business model by studying the target markets that you're looking into. The price point where I did $12 a month was a, wasn't a magic number that I plucked from the sky or I asked Fairy Godmother, <laughs> wave the magic wand. Beep, beep, yeah. beep, beep, beep. You know, and then the magic number appeared. It was because I traveled Southeast Asia tremendously. Three weeks in Vietnam, one week in Singapore, three weeks in Malaysia, one week in Singapore. I literally lived out of those countries like a local and went on the ground, worked with communities to find out what is the, what is the earnings of a woman there in those countries and how can we help them to even get started and say yes so that we can guide them and have the permission to walk side by side with them so by developing this business model has allowed so rich women to really transform a lot of lives so definitely mentorship and masterminds where it's five six figure ticket high high ticket programs is great but if you really want to change the world one life at a time then go at a place and at a space where you could serve your people the most so think about love your customers more than you love your product start from that space and i'm sure if you're listening in right now you're a newbie or a aspiring entrepreneur you will succeed what would your advice or feedback be if a woman is listening right now and they have no idea how to start an online business. What would you tell them is the first step to starting an online business? Rather than, you know, we know get a mentor. Like I couldn't agree with you more. Having the different mentors and surrounding myself with the right people has helped me grow. And like you said, why try to reinvent the wheel? Like go ahead and get somebody who's done it. And, and most of the real... Um, mentors, they're very passionate about helping you succeed because if you succeed, they succeed and you know, everybody is happy. But what is the first thing for people who want to start an online business? What's the first thing that you would tell them to do? First, you need to know whether your talent or your passion is A, B or C. So are you able to accelerate that? So let's say if you love baking, right? And and really depends on your definition of b- doing an online business and bring a business online. I think there's two different, I think there's two different things altogether because having done a cafe retail chain, we were also online. We leveraged the online, but we are not really an online business, you know? It's like we are leveraging online as a platform to reach out to more people. But if you want to bring your business, you want to do an online business, say you want to do knowledge-based businesses, like for example, coaching, consultancy, and sell your knowledge for an income, then that would be a totally different ballgame. Then you need to look into why would people buy from you, right? Why are you unique and why are you different? So the first step I will highly recommend you to do is number one, 
you need to determine who you're speaking to. Specific, specific, specific. Because now in this time and age, especially online, is really very crowded, and everyone is calling themselves, um, you know, an expert in something. Then mm-hmm. you need to know who exactly you are speaking mm-hmm. to, and the specific um, service you are offering. I give an example. So if you are offering, let's say, um. Business coaching. So business coaching is really very broad. It comprises of business model, marketing, digital, and there's so much more to that, or branding even. So then you're going to look in specifics. Let's say you are really good in branding and you're really good in graphic design. And instead of just you know, looking into designing logos for people, um, you could even explore developing templates for people like on Canva or Easel, giving them opportunity to get it out of the box. So you must be able to solve that one problem immediately. So identify the one talent or skill that you have right at the moment and narrow it down to the point where you could solve the one problem for the entrepreneur or that potential customer that you want to help. Because if you can sell them a $17 product, okay, or $27 product, or $37 product within this range as a low-hanging fruit to bring in the people first. And when they purchase that item and they know that, wow, you you are mind-blowing, they will say yes to you to bigger ticket items. So for someone who just started, you got to start from that space. A lot of times, even just recently, I just spoke to a lady. She hop on a call with me and she's in HR, which means human resource. And she's been, she's been human resource for 20 years and she wanted to do a side hustle, move into plan B because opportunity to get retrenched is very high. So she wanted to look into that. And when she looked into, um, do you want to do consultancy for HR? I asked her, so what is it that you want to do in your HR con- con- consultancy? And she said, anybody who has a job, who is looking for a job can consult with her. That's super broad. I super. mean, yeah, like yeah. there is blue collar, white collar workers, and <laughs> there's so many different levels. Like people who's earning two thousand dollars versus you want to you want to serve people who's earning five thousand dollars. You want to serve people um who are C suites. Totally different ball game altogether. Totally. The the words they use, the messaging that you use is different. So that boils down to when you are starting out, you really need to look into specific, specific, specifics of your message. Number one. Number two, who are you serving exactly? Number three, what is the one problem that you can solve immediately? That, that when they say yes to you, they will say the next yes to you ASAP. Yeah, that's so true. And it, it's actually taken me a couple of years. Well, and having a mentor who really helped me define like, in, in events, like we serve about 3% of the market and that's okay, but it's a very, very specific person. Most of our clients, they are entrepreneurs, which gives us the opportunities to not just do one event, but multiple events for them. Because if they're an entrepreneur, they're going to be celebrating lots of different things. And typically entrepreneurs, they have to have team members which they're constantly celebrating that as well. So really narrowing the focus, I could not agree more. Um, So how is your business during COVID and being a a worldwide pandemic, how has that impacted any of your businesses? With them being online, I want to assume, you know, everything is great, but has there been an influx of people who want to learn how to do online businesses since COVID or how has your business shifted? My business shifted for, for definitely because more, more customers are coming on board. But the key thing here is the main problem we are solving is rebranding. A lot of them are there for the last 20 years, 30 years. You know, they are there for many, many years, in, whether in a 9 to 5 employee or in business. They have been there for a really long time. And because when COVID uh, struck they are either in the unpaid leave mode or about to be retrenched or already being retrenched that's another one 
And then we have another group of business owners who either lost their businesses, businesses not doing well, not getting a lot of customers. So all of them do come to us and the one problem we are solving is rebranding. So instead of just saying, oh, spend more money on Facebook ads, you're going to you know, get yourself more leads and in customers, um, they want to tune their messaging. So we help them a lot with that. And one of the ways and solutions we provide uh, is through the power of podcasting. How did you decide to start your, in, in your podcast? So ready for this, guys? The podcast is for women who love the F word, <laughs> which I absolutely <laughs> love. <laughs> how did you, how did you pick the name of that? <laughs> Oh, because F word to me means being fabulous, having freedom, financial independence, and family. And alone, we are strong. Together, we are unstoppable. So that's how I came up with the name for women who love the F word. I love it. So it's not what you think, guys. It is all good, positive, loving things. And so in looking at some of the, po the past podcasts you've done, um, I know like in the United States, a lot of marketers follow Gary V and love Gary V. And I know that you guys have done some stuff together. What was it like working with him? Oh, Gary V is very down to earth. He is direct and I like it that he appreciates you as a person. I mean, considering someone who is really well known and someone who has done, you know, so much in his life when you meet him in person, it's like, wow, you know, he's, he's, he's personable. I, I like it. That's awesome. That's awesome. I just, I, I think that it's amazing all of the, the different things that you have done. Um, how did you decide to start? Because I know that you have a lot of online courses. And so if someone wanted to jump in to the first, first thing, would you start to say that the first step would be, I know that you have like a 21 day program to help people like uncover their genius and build their brand. Would that be like the first step where they could go in and learn from you? Yes, definitely. In fact, uh, that is one of my best seller. <laughs> is, is, is that the, um, so it's 21 days. It's a dollar a day, which is amazing. Mm. And so like you were saying earlier, I would assume that this is one of the products where, and guys, if you don't know what low hanging fruit means, like this is an introductory product where it's obtainable, pretty much anyone that wants to do anything could afford it. You have to spend money to make money. You have to invest in yourself. When people ask me like, how many mastermind groups are you in and how much do you pay for that every year? I don't think of it that way at all. I think, oh my gosh, I've gotten so much out of that mastermind group and how much profit has it brought me because I'm much smarter than going in or, or coming out of it. And so do you recommend to people to join an annual mastermind and, and to change it up every year or stay in the same mastermind? What would your thoughts be around that? You are the average of the five people you hang out with the most. And I think I, re I really believe in learning and just upgrading. But you've got to be careful and find, uh, find a balance between multiple masterminds versus that few masterminds because it's, are you implementing at the end of the day? Are you there to feel good? I think that's, that's the two distinct factors. I will put this into to discussion. Right, if you are there just to feel good, oh, I'm in this mastermind, you know, I've got, I know this, so this person and that person, well, that's not going to cut it. You have to implement. And if you were to implement, then that would be a different ball game. And how much strategies can you implement at any one time? So even though you could be in a multiple ones, you could, if you are fast and you're smart and you know how to choose the strategies that really works for your business, then definitely for sure, you can be in multiple masterminds. But if you were just starting out and you're new to all these, find a balance, find a sweet spot. And I think that would be important. That's awesome. Do you have like one story of a female entrepreneur that really just sticks out that you could share with us that if somebody is listening to this and I, I mean, I have had a lot of women reach out to me and just say like, I don't know what to do. Like my business is suffering there um, and live events. 
And do you have one success story that you could share with us that could give others inspiration on where someone started and then where you helped take them? Like, do you have one stick out story? Yeah. Do you, you know, fitness studios have to close, right? So yes. one of my coaching students, uh, she runs a fitness studio. So she has a couple of outlets in Singapore. And can you imagine when COVID happened and we call it circuit breaker? And we need to close all studios and all gyms and everything. So for a couple of months, she had no income. She has zero income at all. So it was really very tough. So the thing that differentiates her and the rest of the people was that she implemented the strategy where she continuously gave value. She shifted the sort of studio online and she started this fitness studio kind of like what, what do you call this um live sparks fitness online that means it's an online platform where you garner all your instructors and she put up zoom classes and form a 17 dollar a month membership so at the beginning it was really tough and you know for months one to two months people don't really want to pay uh, 17 dollars for that because a lot of the other fitness instructors are charging five dollars usd for a class why would yeah. i pay 17 dollars for maybe but then for 17 dollars a month for maybe 42 classes a month i mean that's a lot of value it is. So, yeah that is but people just don't see it you see but you see what I coach and mentor her is that we need to shift her mindset to believe that she's giving absolute value. So we implemented some strategies to do stickiness. I don't even know what stickiness. That means um, if you complete three months of membership, you get this free gift, right? You complete six months of this membership, you get this free gift, like a stretch band. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what, I don't know what all the, all the gadgets called, but like stretch band and all the exercise fitness gears, yeah. you know. And then by, by the sixth month and the ninth month, you'll receive a set of like sports bra and like, you know, uh, I don't know what's that, like sports out, uh, outfits, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. so, so we implemented all these um, items into that, the whole business model, right? Because it's bankable and there mm -hmm. must be continuity. And if you were to join them as an instructor, so we help her to craft a continuous business model where if you had someone who can come in at $17, as in, so you are the instructor, you, people pay $17, attend your class, you will get, a 50% commission, right? And it's recurring for life as long as the person continue to pay. So that means you as an instructor are making money, a passive income for one-time work while the other, let's say that these people are paying $17 a month, but they are continuously paying and joining other classes as well. So as long as you bring them one time in and they stay in the membership, you as an instructor who bring all these customers in, you get to be paid Talk, talking about active income and passive income. Active income is the moment you teach, you get paid. The passive income comes when you're not teaching while their students are attending other people's classes and following other instructors. And if they continue the membership, they continue to get paid. So this success story, I want to share it with you because I found it very fulfilling to be able to help someone who has so many outlets fitness studios cannot open. How do you transform a business model entirely online yeah. and be successful at it today? Just within three months, she has got, what, 300 students paying $17 a month mm -hmm. in just three months. And, and to me, that is success. And now that circuit breaker, and here in Singapore, circuit breaker means that we now it's over, you know, so we are opening up and immediately... Uh, we help her to, you know, kind of craft and continue to grow uh, more outlets across the country. Which is amazing. And for, for those of you listening, um, and, and like Janisha was saying, like, if you don't know what stickiness is, it means like you want to create a product or something that continuously keeps people coming back and people love free stuff. And as an entrepreneur and like, depending on your overhead, we all know that nothing is free, but it, you've got to look at the big picture and like making sure that you're constantly giving value. And, um, it, I, I guess like a, a, another term, like if, if people are, if you're doing, um, 50% commission and it's really affiliate marketing. Right. And so that's where, 
a lot of power can come from is if you can build a core small group. And then that small group, I mean, for me, our small group, it, they're, they're our biggest cheerleaders <laughs> because they have reaped the benefits of some of the things that we have taught them. And they go out there and we don't even ask them to talk about it, but we give them an aff affiliation link because we want them to reap the benefits as they're out there, you know, promoting and being the biggest cheerleaders. Some people have some negativity around affiliate marketing. And when I get that, I'm like, oh, you really don't know what affiliate marketing is. I'm like, let me tell you how many positive things there are about affiliate marketing. And there's no reason to be secretive about it. Um, it, it can be a very powerful thing when you have a voice in front of millions of people and they trust your brand. And so um, what are your thoughts on that? Do you do a lot of affiliate marketing and do you teach other women how to do that as well? We do teach affiliate marketing, but it's not very well received because in Asia, the mentality that they don't want to sell other people's things. They want to own their own things. So oh. a lot of times, this kind of businesses turn it into micro businesses. That means, uh, for example, I'm a distributor. I have access to certain products at a special price. If you buy 10 products from me, uh, 10 pieces versus 50 pieces, you get you know bulk discount and then you can do a business. So this is what we call micro businesses. It's actually distributor kind of model and reseller model, but there's this term that's called micro businesses right now in, in, in Asia. And, and affiliate marketing is a sentiment where a lot of women in our network don't understand. They think, number one, that it's, it's more, like I said, selling other people's product and they don't really like it. Number two, you know, a lot of them just spam the links. You know, they just, they don't really understand how it works. You need to give value first and then put in your links, right? But some of them just, okay, just post it on their social media every single day. I'm like, okay, you know, that, that is not affiliate marketing, right? Right. Yeah. So, so that in a, in a topic in itself, we do discuss a lot and how we educate our network to look into affiliate marketing as a way to grow an army of people to yeah. build your business together with you, not for you, but together because they also make money, you know? Yeah. 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 And, and again, like it, I feel like in the U.S. it was, um, you know, years ago when it, it was still very new with affiliate marketing. My thing is like, for example, we'll have people say, oh, will you um, talk about our paper planners? And like this literally happened to me. And I'm like, we don't use paper. We teach people how to go paperless. So why would I talk about you know, and do an affiliate, that's not being authentic to my brand at all. And any of our followers would know that I would never use that, you know, so we would politely say, thank you for thinking of us, but we don't use paper and, you know, decline. However, there's lots of softwares that we use and we, I would not be able to run my businesses without these softwares. And so we have a lot of affiliate programs with software companies to help other people and educate other people how these automation tools and how these softwares can help. So I do think it's all about in the messaging and how you communicate that. Um, and w do you have a favorite platform that, that you build on? Do you use ClickFunnels, Kajabi, lead pages? Do you guys have a favorite platform? Wow, I've come a long way. I mean, <laughs> in the past, it was Lead Pages, and uh -huh. then I used it with Infusionsoft, and yep, I'm still with Infusionsoft to now. But I've added ClickFunnels into my 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 treasure trove. I think it's easy to use, and and with their affiliate system, it it is pretty amazing I would say and everything is in one place and I, I like what I see so these are the few key pieces I'm using of course there are other softwares as well but I think it's too long to mention right, well, right. Two, two days to finish you know <laughs> right yeah we use Infusionsoft too and um we use lead pages and Kajabi and ClickFunnels people are like well, why do you use so many different softwares I'm like well they have different features and um I'm a little bit nuts about it um, you know, in a good way, but there are some things with Infusionsoft where 
it's so, it can be so overwhelming. I mean, I've been using it, I think going on seven years now, and I still don't know everything about it. There's a lot to learn. Um, but for someone who doesn't have a robust CRM and they aren't selling online, is there an introductory platform that you would recommend, like just based on your experience? Like, would you say, hey, start with lead pages before you work up to click funnels and before you invest in Infusionsoft? Like, is there a route that you recommend to your clients? Lead pages really is for mainly lead gen. That means lead generation, you want lead capture pages, lead pages is amazing. Then if you really want something that's a little bit more robust, really go for click funnels. Even though the pricing 20, 24 USD for lead pages to get started versus a 97 USD to get started. Well, lead pages has got email marketing tool that just directly help you to send some emails like fulfillment emails and follow-up emails and bed and cut emails at least in that single funnel well, so it's pretty easy to use and we have gotten many students to get started on click funnels because of that because if you were to use lead pages for example then you need to get like other softwares like Infusionsoft or MailChimp or whatever to deliver your emails so I would recommend you to first get started maybe if you're just new you're just collecting leads sending out your lead magnets get lead pages and then if once you're ready for more serious stuff then you know ready to scale up to a thousand two thousand three thousand dollars a single month then go for click funnels that's awesome so one more question about um lead magnets do you find that you get a better response from doing like a one sheet that has like five or, and I'm just totally making this up, but like five really um, robust like tips versus giving away a lead magnet that's like a 30 page book. Do you have any feedback on, because we get this question a lot, like what's a lead magnet and how long should a lead magnet be? And I'm like, well, Again, like you were saying, who's your audience? Who are you talking to? Where can you give value? But sometimes I find that people are giving too much away, like too much value. So in your experience, what is too little and what is too much for a lead magnet? One-liners are too little for sure. And then don't just give people like a one page and three lines, you know. Now Canva, uh, Canva, this software is so easy to use. I mean, it's great to create lead magnets. But let, let's put it in perspective. It really depends on what problem you're solving, right? It, it, essentially. So if you, you want easy, one fast checklist, cheat sheets are the fastest and the easiest. But you have to put it into context, you know, how... At what level are you solving the problem at? If you are solving someone a little bit more advanced, like one of my lead magnets is a, how do you delegate 80% of your to-do list to your assistant so that you can make money online? And it can be a one pager because I developed a workbook for that entire purpose. And that will mean when that person download my workbook, he or she will be able to go through the entire workbook and essentially learn how to delegate 80% of her to-do list to their assistant. So what is the outcome of the lead magnet that you wish your client or potential client to achieve so that they will say yes to you after the lead magnet to an upsell of maybe $38 or maybe $97, you know, to the next level. So that is what you need to consider. I love that. This has been so awesome. So helpful. I could like talk to you about this stuff all day long. <laughs> And there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of women in the create, like in the creativity space that, um, that understands this whole online market. Like that's what we are, we are trying so hard in the U S to find women that want to learn about this, but it's very far few in between. Um, how do you find so many women? I, I, I think I know the answer to this, like how you went to the different communities and, and showed them like how you could help them. But I feel like a lot of people that come on, they're like, oh, this is a lot of work. And I'm like, if it were easy, everybody would do it. And everybody would have million dollar businesses online. And it is a lot of work, but the work pays off and you can make money while you're sleeping. Like that does exist but you have to put the work in. 
And so do you find like, um, I know you do a lot of online events where you're teaching these women. Do you find that 10 out of a hundred take it and, and scale it and grow it? Or do you find, you know, 85% of them do it? Like, what are the outcomes of some of your programs and teaching other women how to do this? I think that fundamentally, everybody loves a secret. Yeah. Um, and they will love to know what's a secret. And then they will think about whether to take action on those secrets. So I will say that will account to the majority. And then you have a group of women, I would say 20% of that 100% who will take action and work their ass off to get the results and dreams that they want. Yeah. One last question. How do you find, like, this is the magic question, like the work-life balance. How do you maintain that? How do you find time for the family? And I know that growing an online business can bring you financial freedom where you can be a leader, but do you calendar block? Do you um, build that into your calendar? How do you find time for you and for your family? Literally calendar block, because if it's not scheduled, it's not real. And <laughs> I, I <hate> sister. <laughs> yeah, because that's the only way. I mean, there's no such thing as let's see how it goes because the moment you say let's see how it goes and you'd be like schedule another zoom meeting another client uh -huh. meeting another staff meeting you're like never ending story to do list so it's best to schedule it and i do schedule it i i have dinner with my family every day actually uh, awesome. between 5 30 p.m to about 8 p.m and still have time to do everything else that's awesome Time block and, and understanding priorities is definitely, to me, the key to making sure that you're doing everything that you want to do to make time for the things that you want to do. So if people want to connect with you, um, I know that you are, they can visit your website, soulrichwomen.com. I know that you also have janishaallure.com, which ladies, we will put all of this in the show notes. And you've got Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and Twitter. But what's your favorite platform if people want to connect with you? Well, you can connect with me on Facebook uh, at Janisha Alora, which is G-E-N-E-C-I-A-A-L-L-U-O-R-A. -E -E. In fact, LinkedIn will be good as well. Uh, most importantly, you know, say hi to me, okay? Yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. And this was awesome. Everyone listening, be sure that you go and check out the podcast as well. I can't wait to go and listen to some of the interviews that you have done because you have really interviewed some amazing people. And thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. This was absolutely phenomenal. And everyone listening, thank you so, so much for your time, your generous time today. And be sure to tune in next week for another episode of Business Unbound. Everybody have a great day. And thank you so much, Denisha. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Now that you have all the tools you need to conquer the world in GSD, just share this with your friends and your fellow GSD leaders and be sure you're a subscriber so you never miss the juicy details of Business Unveiled and you can ask Siri to listen to the latest episode, but you got to be a subscriber. Before I go, I have a huge favor to ask and it would mean the world to me. While you're listening, snap a quick screenshot, post it to your Instagram story, tag me at GSD leader underscore and share with me your top takeaway from this episode and how it relates to you. Until next time, remember, stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Business Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time as we share our experiences to help you be more productive and profitable in your creative business. For more great resources, visit AngelaProfit.com.